You are listening to a Pod Bros exclusive. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, we're live. Brand new episode, Take Aim Outdoor Podcast. And uh, excited to do another show. Excited to get very close to bow season. Today we have returning guest Michael Lee from Backwoods Life and Lethal Scent Elimination Products. What's up, Michael? What's going on, brother? Not much, man. I know we were just talking about hunting trips and probably like you just getting excited that it's uh, it's here and ready to rock. Yeah, man. Um, what's What's been rough so far? It's been so hot for everybody. You know, this summer and, and even here early in the season, a lot of places, the, the weather's just been brutal. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to traveling north a little bit. Maybe it's cooling off and get uh, get that feeling you get when you, you get that little bit of cool in the air that, that kind of gets you fired up about being out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's been the same here. We just started hitting uh, what I would call normal temperatures. We're in the, you know, mid-60s right now, but... The week before, we were in the mid-80s, so we are you know, highly above average temperature. And I know you're from Georgia, but 85 degrees doesn't make me feel like fall. It makes me feel very excited either, you know. Yeah, trust me, man. I'm, I mean, like today here, I was outside a few minutes ago, and, and it's probably about 85 right now, but it's really humid. But we're supposed to have a little front come through and get lows down in the 50s for us, which for this time of the year, we'll take it. And uh, highs about 80 uh, which is, you know, that's that's pleasant to be outside in, especially when you're used to 95 the way it's been freaking every week, it seems like. Yeah, that is right. So I'm uh, definitely probably like you. I'm welcoming the, the cooler temperatures and just kind of getting in that, that hunt mode. But, you know, as uh, as it goes, man, there's a lot of states already open and the Midwest is about to open. And, you know, one of the big things that everybody uses, obviously, you know, if, if your hunting is, is a big deal of scent and scent elimination, and I know, Michael, that uh, you're part of the, the lethal product team and, and lethal scent elimination products, so I would like to kind of just educate everybody on some of the products, how to use them, and the science behind it, and just uh, one of those items that uh, you know can just make us better hunters and give us a little bit of an edge. Yeah, um, the cool thing about lethal products is the parent company is clean control corporation. And so we've got a full team of scientists, you know, down in what I call the, the mad lab down there. They're working on stuff all the time for, for clean control products and for lethal products. And their science is based on killing bacteria and removing odors in a household environment. So they took it one step further when they developed lethal and said, Hey, we're going to kill bacteria, which causes odor. We're going to eliminate, you know, scents like we do in, in a household environment, but we're going to eliminate the scents with no fragrance. So they already had a great line of products uh, for household use to, to, you know, kill odors and bacteria. And now they crossed over into the hunting world, if you will, where we've got scent-free products. So based on that science, I mean, these guys, they have it figured out. They know what they're doing down there. Uh, I, I'm proud to work with them. They're super smart. We come up with ideas. They jump right on it. But uh, a quick rundown of the lethal products, we have uh, what we call is our original field spray. Uh, is basically just like you see in, in, everywhere in, in stores, you know, there's a scent elimination spray. But what makes lethal unique is it's a two-part process. You've got your big 24-ounce spray bottle, and you've got a small one-ounce activator that's um, shrink-wrapped to the side. Well, the field spray will work just like it is. But when you put that boost activator in there, that one ounce of little shot, dude, it just takes it up to a whole new level of, of killing odors and, and, you know, just getting rid of those any smell on anything just about. Um, and it's good for 90 days. We're guaranteed it 90 days, 100% money back guarantee. Uh, it, it, just a good example of this thing, my wife and I went out to dinner one night, and it was like an open-air kitchen. And she's got this big, you know, high dollar purse at least in my world you know expensive few hundred dollar purse which is crazy that's a whole nother story but uh, so uh, it comes back and it smells like a kitchen right like it's been this open air with steaks cooking and all this stuff so she says well, well i gotta do something man this my purse smells like a kitchen i said well here spray it with lethal so she sprayed down her purse with lethal and she was like hey this works it had, it had no odor on that purse at all 
So I'm looking at it like, man, this will kill kitchen odors and, and scents like that on a pocketbook. Uh, it'll work on any environment, man. And I've, I've tested it plenty of times in the woods, but, you know, this is a solid product with that original field spray. And from there you go on down the line to, you know, deodorant, boot powder, uh, disposable toothbrushes, field wipes, shampoo body wash, laundry detergent, laundry slash dryer sheet, uh, just a whole line of products that you, from start to finish, are, are scent free when you go hunting. Now, Michael, is the the booster, is that something you actually pour in the, the, the field spray bottle, or is it something you spray on yourself after you sprayed yourself with the field spray? Uh, you actually you'll, you'll open up the field spray bottle and you'll pour that that boost activator in and shake it up just a little bit and you're good to go. And you, I mean, like I said, you've got 90 days of activated product there that's, that's going to get the job done. And uh, another product based off of our original field spray we came out with this year is our our dirt is what we call it, lethal dirt. Um, it's the same principle. It's the field spray. It's got the boost activator, but it's got a dirt scent in it. So for those guys out there that, that like to use that, that earth or dirt cover scent, we've got it all in one bottle now. It eliminates your human odors, gets you a little bit of dirt fra fragrance on there. So uh, I think that's a, a very strong tool that we've come out with this year. Yeah, that's very cool. I like, uh, you know, if it's done right, that product can be very effective because, you know, in a way it can kind of jam you know, a deer's nose a little bit, per se. You know, is that kind of what you're yeah. getting at, Michael? Well, yeah, I mean, and down here, I mean, I'm, I'm in South Georgia, and we have tons and tons of agriculture down here. And One thing that I notice over all the years of me being out in the woods is whenever a farmer comes out and plows up a field or we plow our food plots to get them ready to plant, man, it's like overnight. There's just deer tracks all over in this fresh dirt scent. So I think it works kind of a three-part process. It's kind of an attractant deer smell that dirt scent they come check it out two it kills your odor so we got the you know the field spray technique down pat and um so it's basically an attractant a cover scent and a scent eliminator all in one so like you said a deer comes in they might get a little whiff of of dirt instead of a whiff of, of human odor odor off the bottom of your boots or your hair or whatever that you might have missed spraying down you know yeah, absolutely. Now, I know, you know, there is many field sprays out there, Michael. What is, what are we looking at as far as scientifically? Is it this something that inhibits, you know, bacteria or is it something that it is an enzyme based or what is, you know, some of the scientific stuff that actually eliminates the scent? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's really the combination of our original product with that boost activator. Um, it, it kills on the bacteria level so like i said with clean controls core based products i mean we were they were designing products to to clean uh, emergency rooms and operating rooms to kill on that level to eliminate you know that's that goes all the way down to, to you know infections in surgeries and stuff so they base off of their abilities of other products to kill that to develop this down to something that can kill on contact with your uh, your clothes, your, you know, in the whole environment, really, whatever you spray down with, it's going to just eliminate that odor. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it, I wanted to get at is for people that don't know or or whatever, it, you know, it, bacteria is what actually causes a lot of the odors that we smell or deer smell. So I just wanted to get the part that, you know, it attacks bacteria, which causes odor. Yeah, and, I mean, if you really want to get scientific, um, we actually have a – for a lack of a better term, and getting very wordy, if you will, because I, I don't even know how to pronounce some of the stuff that these scientists use and, and do this stuff, but it's a zinc-based product that actually absorbs that odor to, to kill that odor. Um, it's something in, along those those realms with, with some few other things added in, but, you know, it, it's basically the whole job of that field spray is when it's on contact, it's going to get rid of that odor. Yeah, that's very cool. So, we have field spray, we have wipes, we have deodorant. What else are we looking at as far as the product line itself, Michael? Um, we've got, you know, like I said, we've got the, the whole line of scent eliminating products. Like we've got, you know, deodorant and uh, field spray, body wash, uh, field wipes. <clears throat> you know, we've got disposable toothbrushes, like I said. Uh, we've got the dirt scent. 
And then uh, something that's pretty cool that we've come along with uh, this year, uh, two more products. So we're kind of get away from the, the hunting aspect per se, but we have a, cool, a cooler reviver is what we call it. And I tested this product out myself, me and one of the scientists, David, uh, who, who was kind of behind the design of it too, him and Corey down there in our lab are the mad scientists is what I like to call them. But um, we took this cooler reviver and, and we've got our friends over at K2 Cooler sent us a, a cooler to test this thing on. We, uh, we put a, a dead mullet in a cooler. Now, I know you guys up north may not be very familiar with mullet, but mullet is one of the smelliest fish on the planet that you can get down here in this area. So we left this thing outside in a cooler in 80 degrees or so for two days, just sitting there brewing and stewing. And uh, we opened it up, and it was very, very foul, if you will. So we uh, we dumped out that back, got disposed of that. Uh, we sprayed the cooler reviver on it. <clears throat> Put a little bit of water in there to kind of give it more more activating power and um, let it sit for a few hours and man I've got this cooler sitting here right now and you will not smell a fish smell in this cooler and our feedback on that product has been phenomenal wow that's pretty amazing that's a cool product because uh, I know I've had an episode or two with uh, something that I totally forgot in a bag or cooler like that and uh, oh my gosh it, it's enough to make you want to gag yeah, it's bad, and and the thing with it with with the rotomolded style coolers of today, you know, the Yetis and K2s and uh, you know Igloo and whoever you want to go down the line with, uh, that's a the plastic's a porous substance, and what that means, it's going to absorb liquids and odors over time that are in that cooler, and with that being absorbed, it's very hard to get a, get out of it. I had one guy, he said, man, I've had this cooler that I've used fishing, and it smells like fish. So I cleaned it with Clorox and pine saw, and now it smells like bleach and a pine tree. So he's like, every time you get something out of it, it's still got an odor to it. I said, here, try this stuff out. And he did it, you know, followed the directions on the bottle, sprayed it down, rinsed it out, man, it, and it got rid of that. Um, I, I've, I've even had guys that had uh, cooler stories that have come across my desk that, man, you know, I, one of my pets urinated on my cooler, and it had this smell to it, da-da-da. And it got rid of all that. So uh, that, it's a solid product, man. It's like five ninety nine retail. And, you know, it's, it's a good insurance policy on your cooler just to make it last longer. And you don't have that, that god-awful smell. When you try to get a drink out of a cooler that smells like fish, guess what? Your your, your beer, your Coke, whatever, smells like a fish. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's the worst. It really is. And uh, another thing I wanted to talk about michael's i know you guys have like a uh, a bug repellent and i know if, yeah you know in the next yeah. week or two we don't have to worry about that so much up north but i know you know during the summer when i'm running cameras or or you know walking a new piece of property and, and the, it's 80 90 degrees you're just full of nasty bugs and stuff like that that stuff is unbelievable so give everybody the rundown on on that product yeah our um our bug and tick repellent uh, it's it's this pro it's pro it is our number one selling product uh, on our online sales uh, for 2016. Uh, we've done very well with it, and a lot of people are, are taking advantage of it, especially with with the Zika virus that's going on right now. I mean, we're getting orders from all over the country. Uh, it's a great product. It comes in a two ounce spray bottle, and it's it's scent free. I mean, when you first spray it on, it's got a little bit of an alcohol smell to it, um, but then when it dries, it has no odor at all. It's not greasy. It's it's really an awesome product to use, not just on, on the hunting environment, but, I mean, you know, if you've got kids, you're going to ball games outside, you're going to, you know, any kind of outdoor events, camping, hiking, uh, e anything. Uh, it's a great tool to have, like I said, a small portable bottle. It won't stain your clothes, um, and it won't, uh, it won't eat away at the finish on your gun or bow or anything like that. So uh, it lasts 12 hours for, for most insects. Eight hours is what we, we say for um, mosquitoes and, and ticks. And that's a big thing, too. Like this time of the year, down here in the south, we still have, you know, everything still green and, and active, if you will. But um, going out and mosquitoes might get bad. Like I, I was in Kentucky a few weeks ago uh, hunting for a few days, and, man, the mosquitoes were kind of rough. So, I mean, I had a bottle in my backpack. I sprayed with it. 
you know, I'm, I'm using the field spray and, and all this good stuff to stay scent free while I'm there, even using the bug and tick repellent. Man, I saw, you know, 20, 30 deer one afternoon, and I had deer in every direction. Not one of them busted me. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's pretty warm still. So uh, it's a great tool, and especially with ticks, man, that, that's another thing that as, as hunters, we should all be very aware of ticks and, and the things that they can do to our bodies. I mean, Lyme disease is no joke. I know several people that have, that have that or had that, and um, it's not something that's very fun to go through. So, you know, a little two-ounce bottle can save you a ton of doctor bills. Yeah, man, I know that uh, I'm in two little tidbits here. Uh, I ran out of the bug spray, and a week ago, well, not a week ago, about two weeks ago, I'm sorry, around Labor Day, it was still extremely hot here in Michigan. And I, I went in to move a stand about, honestly, 10 feet. Uh, the tree's just old, it's dying, and I'm just like, man, I'm, it's getting to the point where, you know, this may not be safe. I made it to the, the stand itself, Michael. I had to leave because the mosquitoes were that bad. So yeah. I, I put all that work in to get to the farm and did all that, and then thermocell didn't help, uh, you know, Usually does, but it just this day, it, it I mean, it was just like attack of the mosquitoes, and uh, I actually yeah. didn't get done what I wanted. It was horrible, and uh, yeah, and, that, and 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 I'm not to interrupt you, but um, that's that's one thing that I will say. A thermocell is a great tool. Um, I I, w- I wouldn't say that this can eliminate your use of a thermocell altogether, um, but a thermocell is for a non-moving environment. Like if you're going to sit down and stay in one spot for 15, 20 minutes, hours, whatever. Thermocell works great, but our product, you know, you're going to be scent free. You're going to be able to use that while you're doing stuff out in the woods. Like you're talking about moving stands or checking cameras. You're not going to get just destroyed. You know, you might still hear them buzzing around, but they're just not going to bite you like they would without it. Yeah, that's super nice. Cause it, I mean, it, it's, I'm sure it's bad in the South, but it's bad here. And uh, just so many times without that bug field spray, you just, you can't accomplish stuff. At least I can. It bothers, bothers me way too bad to get, you know, just nonstop attacks like that. And, uh, you know, more and more you hear about the whole issues with ticks. And, uh, you know, you're right, Michael. Like, that's the last thing I want is to deal with, uh, you know, there's really no cure for Lyme disease as of right now. Last time I've heard, you know, a a lifetime of uh, medical bills, I don't think anybody wants that. And it's just a scary thought, you know, really, that that little thing can do that to you. So it's well worth the the value of that two-ounce bottle for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, like I said, I, I encourage everybody to have have a product like that on them. I mean, even if you don't use lethal, definitely use um, a product that that will help you combat ticks and, and mosquitoes because it's just too much out there nowadays. It can really it really hurts you. And next thing you know, you might not be able to hunt at all, and nobody wants that. Yeah, I know that. Uh, you know, from here on out, Michael, you're just telling me you're going to be nonstop on the road. You know, filming for your TV show back backwoods life tv but tell me the process that you use you know lethal products that helps you become a little more successful and 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 Mm -hmm. helps gives you that confidence that you you know you know you've done everything you can to you know slightly try to fool that deer's nose that you know we know is so hard to do yeah for sure um i I go through a pretty good little process um i I wash my clothes in the 4x laundry detergent by lethal uh and throw a unscented dryer sheet from lethal in there and our, our two-in-one laundry sheet uh, i throw that in there together and move those clothes over i, I usually hang my camo up to dry uh, just so that you don't have any fading or anything like that but if you're you know crushed for time or you throwing your socks underwear stuff like that uh, use the the dryer sheet on that too and it'll help eliminate the odors out of out of every article of clothing that you're going to wear so i'll do that you know get my clothes prepped like that keep them in a scent scent free container and before i go hunting most of the time especially when it's warm out or warmer uh i'll I'll take a shower every time i go morning and evening in our shampoo and body wash and uh, another thing that a lot of people don't think about is your your boots uh your boots contain a lot of odor man your your feet put off a lot of sweat and your calves and all through there especially when walking in and out of the woods and it's warm Uh, we make a boot powder it is great, and I, I use it in my regular everyday shoes too. I mean, it absorbs those odor, odors, keeps your feet nice and dry and comfortable. So, um, yeah, that's that's a good product as well in the, in the process. Uh, you know, take a shower, get ready to go, use our deodorant stick, get get make sure those pits are covered, man, because 
especially down here this time of year, because you're going to sweat. There's no doubt about it. Even Heck, I sweat in, in 30, 40 degrees. You know, I'm bulked up going in and out, but you're still going to break a sweat. So you still got those lower layers of you that are they're emitting odors. So you, you got to have all that prepared. And then, uh, you know, spray down once you get out in the field. Make sure you cover everything real well, your backpacks, your bow, your gun, your gloves. That's another thing. Uh, I was actually outside a while ago getting some of my stuff together, and you don't realize when you throw a pair of gloves or face mask or whatever in your backpack and you don't take it out for a while, man, it, those things get a lot of a, a musty smell and maybe even some mildew going on them if you get them really wet when you put them in there. So make sure you spray those things down and wash them too. Uh, that's an important part because that's going to be something that's direct contact with air blowing around out there in the woods. So, um, you know, through that whole process right there, I, I'd say I've, I've had a lot better success, especially down here where it's so hot and humid. I've had deer, you know, well in bow range. And mature does is what I base a lot of things on because if you can get that mature doe in there inside, you know, 30 yards or so without getting busted, that's that's a pretty good accomplishment in my book because they're probably some of the smartest, craziest things in the woods. Yeah, man, they are. It's hard to trick a three- to five-year-old doe, that's for sure. They they know what's going on. and uh, But you're right, man. A lot of guys, even myself, I think about this a lot, is is your backpack and boots. You know, I think of the whole system and what I do. I'm always taking, you know, the utmost care of, you know, my pants, my base layers, and the things I always think about that might be an issue is, is the boots and the backpack, and that's sort of, uh, I think, pretty easy for a lot of guys to forget those items. Yeah, I, I agree with that, man, and and that's something. I mean, it slips my mind from time to time. I get everything out and I get ready to go. I'm like, man, my backpack, is, you know, it's pretty rank from being dragged in and out of the woods. I need to spray it down every time, and got in a pretty good habit with that. And um, just forget about items, you know, stuff that you don't use a whole lot, um, but stuff that, uh, especially whatever comes in contact with with limbs and vegetation or, or whatever when you're walking in and out of the woods or through a field. You think about that everywhere your boot steps. It's putting off some kind of odor. Now, you and I probably will never be able to smell it, but we're talking about a deer who's hundreds of thousands of times better at smelling stuff than we are. Uh, they, they can they can tell you what color socks you have on, I think, from <laughs> just what boots you walk through the woods on. <laughs> yeah, pretty close they can, I swear. It's amazing, amazing what they can do for sure. Now, is there uh, anything prep-wise you do, Michael, for stuff like your washer, your dryer, or anything like that, or... or like your storage system for your current hunting clothes? Like do you, do you have a scent-free tote or how's that work? Um, yeah, for my washer and dryer, I mean, I really don't do much of anything there. Um, you know, want to make sure that there's no residue from your previous, you know, washes in there with, with your regular detergents or whatever. So um, just, you know, check that out and make sure that's good and clean before you go. Most rent cycles get that stuff out pretty good. Um, so when you put your lethal products in there or whatever, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get the full effectiveness. But yeah, after after I wash my clothes, uh, I, I have a a very very durable like a heavy plastic, uh, if you will, uh, tote that I, I use that um, I, I kind of keep all my clothes during hunting season stored in that, especially my my lighter weight stuff, um, because with that you know your lighter weight stuff is usually what you're going to wear in your warmer temperatures, and that's when a lot of your scent uh, gets put out. Is the warmer the weather is the more, obviously, sweat you're going to put off, the more odors you're going to secrete. And it's really important to, to continue to spray down even after you get in the stand for that kind of environment. And as it's colder, as it's colder, I mean, deer can still smell you, don't get me wrong, but it's just a little bit harder when it's colder and drier. So uh, the worst conditions are like what we have when you've got warm temperatures, humidity, a lot of moisture in the air. That's Man, they'll, they'll pick you off in a heartbeat. So... You really have to pay attention to that, in my opinion, especially early season, because those bucks aren't rut dumb yet. You know, they're not running around looking for a girlfriend where they may let some things slip because that's all they got on their mind. I mean, they they are full alert, twenty four seven of of survival and, and feeding, basically this time of the year. Yeah, that is true. It's no joke. Uh, you know, the early season is hard to combat that stuff, and you got to be really on your game nonstop until that. Uh, you know, what I call right at that freezing level, I think it changes a little bit, and you can kind of slip up a little. Not much, but uh, I don't think the odor, like you said, Michael, travels as well when it's really close to that 32 degrees. Yeah, that's for sure. And, I mean, as always, 
nothing's 100%. Uh, so, you know, pay attention to wind direction. Uh, I, and I will, I, I do use an ozonics unit as well uh, because I think, you know, do everything, even if you get a 10% more advantage with every one of these steps we're talking about, I mean, that adds up. So uh, I'll use an ozonics with lethal uh, to make it really a, a very, very strong combination of, to fool a white-tailed deer, man. Uh, I think that's, there's a lot to this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's a device you hear more and more about, and uh, I'm definitely leaning towards I'm going to have to make the investment in, and go get an Ozonix one day because uh, I've heard nothing but great things from it. Yeah, I've killed, so, I mean, through the whole process that I'm talking about with washing, showering, spraying down, and continue to spray down and use my Ozonix, man, I've, I've had a lot of success on deer that I, I can, can say honestly they have come downwind, you know, in the last, last three or four years since I started uh, using everything combined together. Um, but uh, like I said, Lethal, when it came on the scene, man, I, I knew it was a good product. And out of the gate, I was getting better results and just continue to, to get better as we go. And I think people are just getting more more and more conscious on it, especially as bow hunters. Um, you know, rifle hunting, scent control is still very important, but it may not be as important when you're trying to make a 100 to 200 yard shot uh, versus a, you know, 20, 30, 40 yard shot. Unless you're Anthony yeah. Dixon and they're, you know, shooting 100, 150 yards and stuff with a bow. <laughs> yeah, I, when you're you're that badass, you can uh, you get. Can... <laughs> I had to give my boy. I had to give my boy a plug right there, man. He, he's that's a great right, player. man. He, and Dixon, that's... and Dixon, man, he, he's he is probably one of, the, one of the best hunters I know overall, especially bow hunter, and um and he uses lethal religiously. He he's gotten a lot of. A lot of cool stories um, from the last couple of years, you know, using lethal and working, working on some stuff with us. Yeah, he does. And uh, you know what's crazy about Anthony is even though you, uh, you know, made a joke about that, Michael, which is true, man. I mean, that guy can shoot a bow like no other. And he is one of the best hunters I've ever met. That's always, you know, just like you, it's always a privilege to have you guys on the show. But, you know, Dixon also does stuff where, you know, he's had elk at seven yards. You know, I mean, yeah. it's absolutely yeah. amazing the 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 hunts and some of the positions that guy's has been in. Well, you know, uh, he and I, we, we he, I learned a lot from him, and he learns a lot from me, I guess, because uh, he he calls me about hunting from a tree stand, from a ground blind, because because out west, I mean, he, he's from Utah, so you know, he's he's stalking everything. He he's trying to just go out and get it, you know. And I think um, I've learned a lot from him on techniques, and and hopefully he's learned a little bit from me on a, how to how to hunt being a steel guy but uh, just the the in-depth that he goes into preparation for stuff uh i've ter- I've learned a lot from that and, and just being able to work together on him on some things uh, but just seeing how he uses the smallest thing to make a huge difference in a hunt is is really impressive and i encourage everybody to kind of check out what what anthony's doing uh, on facebook youtube he, he's got some cool tips out there not to mention some of his his uh Full moon production videos, man. That's there's some of the most awesome stuff I've ever seen with a bow. Yeah, they were. I mean, he's a he's a class act. He's legitly a world class hunter. And uh, you know, I talked to him quite a bit too, Michael. And every time I talk to him, I'm like, Jesus, man, you are so in depth that you make me feel <laughs> like a freaking amateur all the time. And uh, and uh, yeah, props to the full moon stuff. Uh, you know, he was a, a decade ahead of his time with those productions that are, that are still and will be some of the greatest hunting uh, productions ever made, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, no, no doubt, no doubt. So, so uh, Michael, I know you got a ton of stuff going on, so I won't keep you, but let us know where we can find Lethal Products, and uh, let us know where we can find you at uh, Backwoods Life and, and all the social media and great stuff that goes with it. Yeah, guys. Um, everybody, go check out lethalproducts.com. That's that's a website. It's a full blown e-commerce site. You can go in, and grab you some stuff to try out. Um, go to Lethal Facebook page. It's facebook.com/lethalproducts. Uh, you can also uh, we've got a special for everybody that goes on Facebook right now. You can get 15% off uh, through I think it's through maybe the end of this month. So you only got a few days or so. We may extend that a little bit longer for everybody listening here. But, uh, you know, great stuff. I think it will make you more successful out there if you go through these processes and, uh, you know, fill those tags. And y'all go to backwoodslife.com. We've got tons and tons of stuff on there. We've got past episodes. Uh, check us out Facebook. It's facebook.com slash backwoodslife. We, 
we got 400 or so thousand folks that, that follow us on there, and we appreciate every one of them and, and hope some new guys will come over and check out what we're doing and can be entertained for a little while anyway. Yep, absolutely, and uh, I'll make sure to pass along that stuff for you, Michael, and uh, thanks again, man. I can't wait to have you back on the show, and uh, I wish you nothing but success, you know, come the start of the hunting season here for you. You too, man. Good luck. Keep me posted. Send me some pictures when you knock one down. Always a pleasure, my friend. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Will do. And uh, boys and girls, you know you can find Take Aim Outdoors every Tuesday live on the OutdoorPodcastChannel.com, iTunes.com, or iTunes, I mean, PodBros.com, and uh, we will see you guys next Tuesday.